Hey everybody, it's Kate from Katie Did. We're enjoying a Montana spring snowstorm. I want to welcome you to this channel and I want to introduce eight fantastic rock hounds and me. Um, <laughs> this is the beginning of something that I want to call Rock Around the World and I want to incorporate information and thoughts and ideas from all kinds of different rock hounds. We'll have different topics. This time, the very first time, we're just talking a little bit about why we hunt rocks. This will be a two-part series. The next one will be released at the same time next Saturday, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Thanks for being here. I started rock hunting when I was in Tasmania visiting my dad, and I, was, I had some time to kill and I uh, thought I'd go for a walk along the, the river through Hobart and I found all of this beach glass was sort of in one little area, in one little cove. I started picking that up because I thought that I liked, I love beach glass, I think it's beautiful, but I started picking that up. And then I noticed there was other stuff that looked similar to the beach glass, but it was rocks. And um, yeah, I was hooked since. It was, I think it was just basically quartz and little bits of jaspers and stuff. I took home a whole bunch, like back then a whole bunch would have been about that much, but <laughs> I took home a whole bunch and started looking things up and that's how I got into rock hunting. I, I love it. And then I realized that we could do it in the back of where I live <laughs> and it was all over basically. I love it. And the experience of, <laughs> that's it, I love finding the rocks. Hi there, I'm Rob from Michigan Rocks. I got into this rock tumbling thing through my son. When he was little, I would go in a gift shop and they'd have one of those bins of polished rocks. He always wanted to get a little bag of them. Then when he was about maybe 12 years old, we were in an actual rock shop and they had a big Brazilian agate cut in half and polished. And he used $50 of his own money. And it's like little kid money from birthday gifts and Christmas gifts. 50 bucks he bought this rock for himself. That's when my wife and I decided, maybe we should get him a rock tumbler for Christmas. So we bought him a rock tumbler. Got a flat lap about the same time, a used one a friend uh, practically gave me. And uh, we started polishing Petoskey stones. And if you're gonna polish Petoskey stones, you gotta go find some Petoskey stones. So we got out in the beaches and started looking for them. And then maybe two years into that, he kinda got a little bit older and got interested in other things. And I never got tired of it. So uh, a few years later, and I've got four rock saws and a bunch of other lapidary equipment. And it's like my favorite thing to do is get out on the beach and look for rocks. How did I become a rock hound? I became a rock hound when my family and I moved from Eastern North Dakota in a little small farm town out to the Northlands of Minnesota, right by Lake Superior. And when we moved up here, we were asking around, hey, what's there to do? And everybody's listing up all these amazing outdoor activities to do. And one of the things they mentioned was go agate hunting. I was like, what's an agate? They said, oh, it's this banded mineral that you can find in all these different places and on beaches, gravel roads, gravel pits all these different spots. And one day I thought, I'm gonna try that out because when I was a kid, I loved collecting rocks, looking for fossils. So I thought I'll just ignite my inner child and go get it. And I went to my, out to my first beach up in Two Harbors, Minnesota. I was walking around, I had no idea what I was doing. And I thought, oh, I don't know, I need to do more research. And as I was leaving, I looked down, I saw this really weird looking mineral. After I found it, it was an agate. And I picked it up and it had all these beautiful bands and I really haven't found one like that since then, so it was super special finding that one for my first one. It was only the size of my thumb, it was just a little guy. But since that point, it just ignited this passion of rock hunting, and I found so many new different things since then. It's just been an absolute blast. Hi everybody, this is Thirst Fast. And today we're just going to talk quickly about what got me started on rock hunting. When I was about 10, we moved to Rossport and I had a good friend out there, Rich, and we would we'll go look for treasure, right? Like we were out there basically digging up garbage, uh, bringing it home. Eventually, 
uh, right near my house, we started to find some some little quartz crystals and stuff like that. And then we started to kind of broaden our horizons a little. We got out onto the highway, not on the highway, but just along the highway. Uh, and we started to find fluorite crystals as well. Rich's dad kind of realized that we were getting into the rock hunting a little more seriously. And I think he also just kind of wanted us to stop bringing garbage home. So uh, he took us out to Simpson Island, uh, where we got our first hit at crack it, picking some Lake Superior agates. From there, that was it. I was hooked. Uh, I've always just, since then, just loved getting out and looking around and seeing what's on the ground. How did I become a rock hound? I guess, uh, well, I gotta, I have to thank my wife for it. There was, uh, years ago, we were heading out to the Oregon coast and looking for some interesting things to do, and agate hunting on the beach was one of them, and I got, I was hooked. I was hooked, you know? Found that first nice little, little agate, and looking back now, it was kind of, kind of not that great. I mean, it was probably the size of a pea, but finding that little, little piece of treasure got me hooked on it. What drew me to rock hounding was getting out into areas that otherwise you'd have no good reason to go to. There's no good reason to come out to the area that I'm at right now other than looking for cool rocks, you know? It's getting out into nature and finding neat stuff, I guess. I mean, it's just that simple. Hi, everybody. It's Kate from Katie Did. Why do I rock hound? You know, I grew up looking for rocks. My dad was a rock hound. He had a rock shop in our basement and he used to make jewelry for my mom and for other people. So I grew up looking for rocks and as I grew up, I kind of went away from it for a little bit. But when I had my own kids, I happened to be by the Yellowstone River. And the Yellowstone River, as you know from my videos, is just full of so many beautiful treasures. And so I started rock hunting again. So time passed and the kids grew up and I moved away from the Yellowstone River so I stopped hunting again. Then the time came when the kids were gone. I needed something that I could have a passion about. I needed something that would get me out of the house and keep me happy and healthy and <laughs> keep me from going crazy. And I remembered rock hunting and so Again, I came down to my friend the Yellowstone River and I started looking for agates and petrified wood and jasper. And rock hunting has helped me kind of keep more stable. It has helped me relax. It has helped me just be a better person, I think. And it has also introduced me to a whole world of amazing people. You want to know how or why I got into rock hunting? I really, I, I can't answer that question. I really just see beauty in everything in nature. I like getting out and being by myself. It gives my mind like a little reset, a little reboot from the hustle bustle of everyday life, you know. Get out here and enjoy the river. Get out here and enjoy the rocks. I mean, you know, that's not man-made. God made that, so we got to appreciate it. Man, I appreciate it. Hi everyone, I'm Rhonda, or I love rocks one, two, three. I live in Southeast Queensland, Australia, and go, how did you become a rock hound? I think it was always just been in my nature. Uh, I don't know. There's nobody in my family that enjoys rocks like I do. Uh, I didn't even have any friends that enjoyed rocks like I do. It just, it's always, that interest has always been there. And I would look over the years, just if, if I was out somewhere and there were rocks, I would, I would have a quick look. But I didn't think it was something that, that I would be ever able to do in finding something amazing. I thought that was for professionals, that, that somehow they had this ability to know where to look, what to look for, that that had some sort of education, I guess. So I didn't think that a normal person like me would find amazing rocks like what you see on the internet or at exhibitions these days. And then about six years ago, I decided to take my kids for a picnic in a creek bed and we found our first piece of chalcedony. 
I was amazed. I thought it was pottery at first and quickly realised it was actually a stone and that really kicked it off for me because I, I thought where there's one, there's more. And that, you'll hear me say that a lot because it's true. So we started scanning this creek and we go back regularly. It's my, one of my favourite spots. And we never come home empty handed. Yeah, I guess that was the, the start of my true sort of rockhound journey and opening up and being honest that that's a part of who I am. I got into rock hounding at an early age because my family rock hounded, especially my grandfather. And I'd go down to his place and I would see his pile of rocks that wasn't much different than this pile of rocks right here. And I would sort through it and I'd ask him questions, you know, about all the different rocks. And he'd tell me, and he'd tell me where he got each and every one of them, which I was fascinated by. How could you remember all that? But now that I have my own pile of rock, I can pretty much do the same thing. So child, I'd go down there and we'd play Yahtzee and he'd invite a couple of his old buddies over. And during that time while we're playing Yahtzee, they would talk about all the different uh, places that they went. You know, they were on the Columbia River before there was even dams there. And uh, that's hard to imagine now, but they'd be on those gravel bars getting agates and artifacts and all sorts of stuff. You know, because that was a free-flowing river and those gravel bars really changed a lot during those times after the floods. And you got to think about this. This was a time when the only way of getting around was either by boat, walking, or maybe by horse. And there might have been a few people that might have had a car because they just got invented. But they got around and they told some stories. They talked about also the treasure hunting and He'd tell me about how to find things on old homesteads and ghost towns and things like that. So as a child, you know, I just absorbed it all. I became a rock hound because I have always had a love for rocks and nature growing up. Um, but really what got me into it was um, being passed down my grandfather's rock collection. My grandfather was a rock hound and used to make beautiful jewelry for me when I was a kid and um, I didn't really appreciate it too much then but when he passed on I was passed down his collection and um, I didn't really know what anything was so I started researching and um, trying to find out what what I had and and that's what really sparked it. Um, it. Just in the process of all that, I just felt fascinated with all the different minerals and varieties and the history of the stones. And um, really that's what sparked, sparked the obsession and it began. <laughs> Special thank you to all of those who participated. I appreciate your effort so much and thank you all for watching. Subscribe to all these great channels and have a great day. This is Kate from Katie Did. Keep on doing.